Hello, welcome back to IT audit or EDP audit. We are now um, on our documentation techniques reports of, again, I am using um, James Hall information technology auditing for um, copyright purposes. Hey, um, also, if you wanted to download the, if you want to download, you can also view it on Facebook group, on our Facebook group, or on um, just search on YouTube Mandrea hashtag Mandrea. Okay, if you want to download the video, you can subscribe or look for me in YouTube, Mom Drea. And you can email me or send me a message if you want an audio format copy or the of this and the uh, PowerPoint. Um, okay, hold on. I am now, I was, I'm also live, but okay um as you know most of the us accountant auditors documentation in a computer-based environment is necessary for many reasons um we know that a picture is worth a thousand words right that's how, that's how you do it um as an auditor you need to first um know what kind of systems in place, internal controls they have. And one of the procedures you're gonna do is to interview and to look around the company or the organizations. And then you need to um, document all you see. And five common documentation techniques that we have is an entity relationship diagram, data flow diagrams, document flow charts, system flow charts, and program flow charts. We have here, we know that um, we've already uh, been uh, studied entity relationship diagram before on a separate um, sessions uh, we did an exercises so what is entity relationship diagram mostly this, this is the representation for the relationship between the entities in the system you need to <clears throat> So in ERD, in ERD plus, we did an exercise on erdplus.com, right? So you just need to remember the REA model version. That's me. You need to remember REA version, model version of ERD, which is widely used on AIS, the Accounting Information System. You should have taken this before you do the EDP audit. So REA stands for the resources, which is um, uh, entities. It should um, talk about mostly nouns, so like cash, inventory, audit, automobiles, raw materials. And then we have E for the events, which most it like, um, release of materials, raw materials into the pr production process. What else? Receiving cash, shipping goods, ordering inventories, and um, what else? Agents. Agents is um, inventory. Uh, 
inventory co uh, control clerk, vendor, and then production worker. So mostly it pertains to nouns. Um, next. Uh, in here, we also use cardinalities, which represents the numerical mapping between entities. So if we think of an entities in ER diagram as files of records, cardinality is the maximum number of records, one file that are related to a single record in the other file and vice versa. So it could be one to one, one to many, many to many. So what is cardinalities? You've done some exercises to this. So we see here uh, use of square symbol, which represents the entities in the system. The label connecting the the label connecting line represents the nature of the relationship between the two entity, entities or the dig, so this is the cardinalities or the degree of relationship so this one suggests that each sales person in an organization is assigned to sell one car type or automobile automobile so it is a one-to-one -one, um relationship in if instead the organization policies were to assign a single automobile to one or more more sales salesperson or team this policy should be reflected therefore what's the changes to this relationship it become a one to many relationship so similarly, um, many to many relationship between vendor and um, inventory implies that an organization that buys um, the same type of product from one or more vendors, so that become their source of their inventory. So if, however, they make uh, any changes or they make another policy to buy a particular items just from one single vendor, this should be reflected in cardinality. So what will happen if that uh, policy is done inside the company? It becomes now one, two, many relationship or we're a supplier supply we're a vendor one vendor supply to many inventories so that's it so here we have a, a one customer places many orders so data flow diagrams This one uses a symbol to represent. This one uses uh, symbols to represent the processes, data of sources, data flows, and entities in the system. Compared to other, this is just a logical elements of the system, and it do not represent the physical system, like um, accounting department and all. So as you might review this on your AIS class, somehow DFDs or data flow diagrams and ER diagrams depict, depict different aspects of the system, but they are related and um, can be reconciled. So a DFD is a model of systems that processes and ER diagrams models the data used in or affected by the system. These two diagrams are related through the data. So each data store in the DFD represent a corresponding data entity in the ER diagrams. We have the square which we put on the entity names, the data store that looks 
like this and a process description and the data flow um data direction data flow so these are the it's commonly used symbol in the fds um it represents the systems at different levels of detail from a very general to highly detailed so an entities in a dfd as i mentioned a while ago are external objects at the boundary of the system being modeled it represents um the sources of and destination for the data the odd entities may be um, interacting to the systems or function or they may be external to the organizations so most of the time these are labeled as nouns uh, on a dfd such as customer or supplier while data stores represents the accounting records used in each process a labeled arrow um, represents the data flows between processes data stores and um, entities um, the labeled arrows connecting the process objects represents flows of data such as for example the sales order invoice or shipping notice the processes in the dfd should be um this should be labeled with the descriptive verb so if this is noun this should be a verb such as you ship goods or update records receive customer order so process objects should not be represented as nouns like i, I um like the one in entity like warehouse, accounts receivable department, sales department. So each data flow level should be unique and the same la la label should not be attached to the different flows, flow lines. As I said, um, this is an example. We're in DFD, when the data, um, as you notice, when the data flows into the process and out again um, to the another process, they um, they they have in some ways been changed. For example, consider the uh, sales order, which is now approved or approved sales, then it become an approved sales order. um what else these these are the sales order which is examined for completeness before um being processed further it flows the process of sales or um in other words um what dfd shows what logical tasks are being done but not how they are done or what is performing them so for example the dfd does not show whether the sales approved process is uh, separated physically from billing process in compliance with the internal control objectives so it does not say how many copies right Thus came the system flowchart. Um, this one is a documentation techniques which illustrate the relationship among processes and the document that flows be between them. So it contained more details than data flows and now it clearly depicts the separation of function in a system so let's have uh, late on our next topics we will be comparing also you can see the difference between some manual procedures and computerized um, computer-based 
uh, accounting system. So the, to demonstrate the flow charting of the manual activities here, let's assume that you as an auditor needs to flow chart a sales order to evaluate its internal controls and procedures. So let's, we will begin by interviewing the individuals involved in the sales order process, the clerk, the, the one who is approving. So the sales order process to determine what they do. So you ask them how many copies, where did it go, where you send them, how do you put, uh, input it. So the information will be captured in a set of uh, written facts similar to the so our next um, succeeding topic. So here you need to remember the commonly used symbol such as this one which is the source document or report and here the terminal showing the source destiny or destination of the documents and the reports the start and the end and this is the you can see this only for the manual procedures or a combination of manual and computer so the manual operations is like the this one and then the inverted triangle is for filing or if you want for filing for storing source documents and reports the parallelo ground is the accounting records such as our books of accounts like journals registers logs ledgers and then if we want to calculate the batch total, we use this symbol. Um, these two, on-page connector and off-page connector, we use this for um, um, reading purposes. So we can have a clean um, and then we can understand it better. Some of the complicated um, flow chart need not be in one page so you you just use the on page connector for the description of the process and our comments we use this um uh, we cannot illustrate um we cannot illustrate all of the process so we need to use comments or description of the process and of course we use the arrow for document flow, flow line so this is like an art project. Um, your creative producers should uh, come. <laughs> um, next, here are some um, examples showing us some translated facts into symbol. So let's say, let's continue on our example about the um, sales order process. So first and foremost, if you want to um, do a flow chart, you need to, to input the physical areas of the activities. So here we used um, the columns, vertical columns, and for of events and activities, which is separated. So, and it have a heading sales department credit department warehouse and shipping department we need to transcribe the written facts into a visual format that's next which at this point we are ready to visually represent the system facts so in here what's this oval symbol this is the source of the order which is the customer but it is not part of the system so as i said the oval objects typically used to convey a data source or destination that is separate from the system flow chart and um it should be labeled correctly um so now it entering the sales department uh so see it signifies a hard copy of the customer or a hard copy of the customer order 
and is labeled accordingly. So next, we use this bucket symbol. As I said, this is a manual operation which symbols um, a process done manually. So in this case, the, my assistant or the clerk in the sales department prepares four copies of the um, four copies of the sales order. So notice that the clerk task, not the clerk, is um, the pack, uh, is shown here between the objects and then the direction of the flow and the sequence of the um, and the uh, and then sequence of events. So the clerk in the sales department received the hard copy customer order. Uh, by mail or manually processes it into four hard copies. This is the how you do if you made this photocopies or cup um four copies. So the symbol source documents and then it should be labeled one, two, three, four. So next So let's continue on. We're in the sales document. Sends copy one of the sends copy one of the sales order to the credit department for approval. So it it go the other three copies of the original customer order are filed temporarily and pending credit of. Approval. Notice here um, we used the N and the inverted triangle. First, the upside down triangle symbol represents temporary file mentioned a while ago. So this is a physical file of the paper document such as a drawer or filing cabinet or desk, you know, the in and out um, tray. So, so to signify the filing system use, the file symbol will usually contain N for numeric invoice number or C chronological like the date or A for the alphabetical order or customer name. A, C, N. So, N here. And then the credit um the credit department clerk validates now the customer order received against their hard copy uh credit records and then which they kept so the clerk signs copy one to signify approval and then returns it to the sales clerk. Uh, the this one, yeah, what they call this symbol, the parallelogram shape represents the credit records mentions, and this is usually depicts types of hard copy accounting records such as journals, subsidiary ledgers, general ledgers, logs or shipping logs, and the likes. So in, it goes back to the um, sales clerk. So the sales order one is now signed. I will draw the X. So, um, so this one is signed and become uh, sales order one. So when the sales clerk received the signed copy, what would he do? He would he or she do so she files the copy one and the customer order in the department then the clerk will send or distribute the sales order and file to the warehouse 
and sales order two, three, as three and four to the shipping department, and then order two to the warehouse, sales order two to the warehouse, and then file the customer order and sign our sales order in the numerical order. So what we, what did you notice aside from that? In our flow chart, you notice this circular A symbol, alpha medical, which this one is what? The on page connector used to represent the flow lines that the otherwise would cause um, clutter on the page. In this instance, the connector usually replaces the lines that signifies movements of copies three and four. So, unlike here, we use line. It's, it's near. So, if we did put a line going there, it's kind of confusing and messy. So, the lines should be used whenever possible and should be. Um, promote clarity and done um, it's but it's not usually you should minimize using it as much as possible also so next on a warehouse department what would the warehouse clerk do he would uh, upon receiving the sales order to he would pick up the product from the shelves and then he would record the transfer in the hard copy stock records and sends the copy the pr and the product the copy sales order to and the product to the shipping department so the shipping department receive the goods or pick up the goods receive the copy to and um, attaches the copy to a stapler, stapled it as a packing slip, and then you ship it to the customer. Finally, um, the sales order three and four will be your the company copy, and therefore the shipping department would file it. So finally, what did you notice? For visual clarity, system flow chart only show the processing of a single transaction only. So you should keep in mind, however, that the transactions um, usually pass through a manual procedures in batches or groups. So here, system flow charts used to represent the relationship between the key elements, input sources, programs, output products of computer systems. It also show the type of media being used with whether a paper, magnetic tape, uh, and then um, magnetic disk and terminals. In practice, there's not much difference with the document and the system's flowchart. So nevertheless, the primary objectives should be to provide a clear description of the system. With this in mind, we can um, create certain rules and conventions to observe, such as um, Flowchart should be labeled to clearly identify the system that it represents. Hold on. And um, number two, the correct symbol should be used to represent some various entities in the system. The system on the flowchart should be labeled and the lines should have arrowheads to clearly show the process flow and sequence of events. 
if it is too complex, you need to uh, put additional explanation or the the symbol for documents and comments or text description. Uh, where is that? So you need to put this one if it is too a complete complex process. So and then it should be attached or in attach the documentary reference by the flow chart. So we now go to the symbol set for computer process. It's pretty much the same, uh, but we need to um, add like the video display device. What is this? Monitors, magnetic tape for storage, computer process, direct access storage device, the terminal input output device keyboard like symbol so that's how i um put it so it looks like a keyboard right the flow process flow real time online connection so hold on like the manual you need first to lay out the physical areas of the activities so we have the sales department oops what happened to the credit department it become now a computer operations department warehouse and then shipping department so it should begin begin with the creating a template that depicts the areas of activities and the only difference in this case is that the computer operations department is here now and then of course it has a heading next the same as manual you need to transcribe the written facts or gathered from your interview into a visual format so let's look at uh, the example again wherein you a clerk in the sales department would talk to a customer and, and received a customer order by mail which is a manual process and then enter the information into a computer um, computer terminal that is networked to a centralized computer program in the computer department so the original order is then um, filed in the sales department so the customer here and the customer order um and file symbol in this flow chart are the same in the previous example so the clerk's activity however is now automated um and the manual process symbol has been replaced by a computer terminal and then also because this is a data input operation the arrowhead um in the flow chart uh, line points in the direction of the edit and check program so if the terminal was also used to receive the output the fox do not specify such an operation uh, so if that happens arrow heads would be put on both end of the line okay and next um a computer program edits the transaction here and um checks the customer's credit history by referring to this um, file and produces the transaction file of the sales order um let's recall that the employees in the flow charting in flow charting is on the physical system for example the terminal used by the sales clerk to enter a customer orders 
is physically located in just in the sales department but the programs that process the transactions and the files that is used to update and stored in a separate computer operations or separate department so notice how the flow lines from the credit um history file to the um edit program the this indicates that the file is read or referenced but not changed or updated by the by the program so the sales order transaction files sorry sales order transaction file is then processed by an update program that um, post the transactions to the corresponding records in AR and inventory files. Hold on. So let us continue. So finally, after the update program, what happened? Um, it produces three hard copies of the sales order. The copy one is sent to the warehouse copy two and three is sent to the shipping department so upon receipt of the copy one the warehouse picks the product from the shelves and using the copy one and the warehouse um personal computer the rpc the clerk will enter the records into the inventory transfer in the digi digital stock records that are kept in the pc and then next the clerk will send the physical inventory and copy one to the shipping department so hold on So what did you notice here? The warehouse warehouse PC is a standalone computer separate to the other departments. So standalone computer system that is not network and the computer operations department like the one um like the one in the terminal two I terminal in the sales department. So it's not ne network in the computer department. So this PC, the stock record update program and the stock records themselves are as we will see later on um, the physical arrangement system components both manual and computer often plays an important role in our um, auditors assessment of internal control so as we will see so here we are, there's another on-page connector. The shipping department receives the copy one um, of the sales order. So what would the shipping clerk would do? He or she would reconcile the good with the copy one, two, three, and then attach, so attach copy one as a packing slip. Uh, stapled it on the products and then next this um, clerk will ship the goods put it on Lazada or FedEx or Air 21 JRT next the clerk will ship the goods with the copy one attached to the um, uh, and to the product and then to the customer finally the rep the clerk records the shipment in the hard copy shipping log um, and then the sales order two and three will be filed in the shipping department so this is entirely a manual operation as evidenced by the symbols so we have to take note that the shipping log uses the same symbol as the one in the representing the journals um, and ledgers so this is high level of documentation 
However, still, it does not provide us operational details that are sometimes we need, right? Thus come the program flowchart. For the um, program flowchart for the operational details, for example, we as auditor wishes to assess the correctness of the edit, edit program's logics, which cannot do so from our previous system flowchart. And so this requires a program flowchart. Um, processing involves the series of tests to identify certain clerical and logical errors. Each test represent, uh, represented by the decision uh, symbol, the diamond, which evaluates the presence or the absence of the condition, the yes or no decision making. Stop. For example, an edit test could be the, to detect the presence of alphabetic data in a field that should contain only numeric data. So, so we as an accountant sometimes use program flowcharts to verify the correctness of the program logic. So they, we need to compare the flowcharts to the actual program code to determine whether the program is actually doing what the documentation describes. We use the logical process symbol, the rectangle oval for the terminal or end operation, the input and output operation, the flow of logical process. Modern system versus legacy system. In here, for modern, we use real time processing that is used to um, transactions in re real time and used for relational database tables. It's a high degree of process integration and data sharing. And this one is shared or used by the batch processing later on. So some firms employ legacy system for a certain aspect of their data processing. So we need to still know the legacy process systems um, characteristics, which is mainframe based application and it is batch processing oriented or so. So early legacy system use flat file. Remember the flat file for data storage wherein it has separate or it, it is not centralized. So the later era legacy system is used also in hierarchy, 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 hierarchy and network databases, sorry. <laughs> Hold on. So the data storage system promotes a single user environment that discourages information integration. So whether it is a batch or real-time processing, which we we'll later on drill down, discuss, whether it is batch or real-time processing is being used, the updating a master file record involves the changing the value of one or more of its variable fields to reflect the effects of the transactions. So in here, the sales order records is read by the system and the account number uh, is used to search the master file or AR master file uh, and retrieve the corresponding AR record. It is the primary key here in this table which becomes a foreign key here in the sales order transaction of file or secondary key. So next, the inventory number now is also uh, inventory update program. Uh, inventory number is used to search for the corresponding inventory master file. 
corresponding record in master inventory master file and then the inventory update program reduces the inventory level by deducting the quantity sold if they deduct the quantity sold on the one that is the quantity on hand filled value in the inventory record so the new sales or the records is read and process is then repeat, repeated so we discussed this on our previous chapters the database backup procedures only the current values is available to the users. So this is a destructive updates leave no backup. So to preserve the adequate accounting records in case the current master becomes damaged or corrupted, separated for separated uh, backup procedures such as shown here. Uh, must be implement, implemented prior to each um, batch update or periodically, for example, every 15 minutes or just 30 minutes, the master file is being updated and then is copied to create a backup versions. Um, of the original file should the current master file be destroyed <clears throat> after the update process then the, the this reconstruction process have happened so the master file is being copied as a backup the recovery program used the backup to create a pre-update version of the files so First, the special recovery program uses the um, backup file to create a pre-update version of the master file in case not brown out or power outage. So the last backup is the one that is used as the recovery file. So second, the file update process is repeated using the previous batch of transaction to restore the master into the current condition. So Maybe because of the potential risk to the accounting records, we as our accountants are naturally concerned about the adequacy of all backup procedures. Also, we as auditors will look into that, right? So again, what is computer-based accounting system? There are two classes of it, the batch system and then the real-time systems watch what is batch system a batch is a group of similar transactions that are accumulated over time and then processed together the transaction must be independent of one another during the time period over which the transactions is accumulated in order for the batch processing to be appropriate meaning it does not affect the current records and then it should have a time log exist between the event and then the processing and what is an example of this example payroll processing is a typical batch system so the economic events happening we work daily hourly so the application of the employee labor rate occurs continuously throughout the pay period right so at the end of the period whether it is bi-weekly or weekly the paychecks of for all employees are prepared together as a batch and then we received it on pay day so that's the usual um transactions for the backup and editing so steps in excuse me batch processing um you should be from familiar with this term we already discussed backup procedure keystroke is used for where 
the source documents are transcribed by clerks to the magnetic tape for processing later. And then we can edit run, which identifies clerical error in the batch and places them in the error file. Then you sort run, you just sort it out and places the transaction file in the same order or the master file using a primary key. And then update run, which there's changes already where in the value of the appropriate fields in the master file change just to reflect the value of the transaction. So advantages of the batch uh, processing. Organization can increase the efficiency by grouping large numbers of transactions into batches rather than processing each event separately. So the batch controls, batch processing provides control over the transaction process via um, control for prefigure. So the accuracy of the process is um, somewhat established by periodically re reconciling the batch against the control figure. For example, we assume that the total value of the sales order is $100,000. And then this amount is recorded when the batch is first assembled and then recalculated at the various points during the processor. So if an error occurs during the processing, for example, the sales order is lost, then recalculated batch total will not equal the original batch total and then the problem will be detected. Like um, if you are working in the um, ticket, um, parking tickets. So there will always be someone coming in and coming out. So the clerk will just do real time recording, sending um, ticket, parking tickets. Uh, and then he will um, do a tally of it at the end of the day. Then record it by batch. And before you record it on your books. So there's a com economics impact actually. So first is the economies are derived by making transaction batches as large as possible. So the average transaction cost is therefore what? Reduced when the processing fixed cost associated with the batch is allocated to a large number of transactions. And second implication is that finding an error in a very large batch may be very difficult. When a batch is small, it is easy to find an error because you can even just do it. <laughs> um, count the tickets, for example, faster. So what is now? real-time system real-time process transactions individually at the moment the event occurs ha it have no time lag between the economic event and the processing of the transaction so generally it requires um greater resources than batch processing since they require dedicated processing capacity. However, these costs differential are now decreasing with the advent of technology and internet. So oftentimes have longer system development time. So an example of real-time processing is an airline reservation system, which uh, process the request of services from one <laughs> Sorry about that. That's my cousin. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. So an example is um where were we? The airline reservation system. So if there is a request for system from one traveler at a time, um while he um he or she waits. So the most significant resource 
differentials, as I mentioned, are in the area of the system development, which is programming and computer operations. So as batch systems are now generally simple than real-time counterparts, they tend to have a shorter development periods and it's done and, it is, and the programmer is done also easy to maintain and then go give it to the users. On the other hand, as much as 50% of the total programming cost for real-time systems are incurred in just designing the user interface. So it should be like user-friendly and forgiving and easy to work with. So the so real time system have like pop up menus, dialogues or online tutorials, special help features that just require additional programming and um that's why it's costly and added greatly to the cost of the system. So since it is real time there's no programmer or guides to so just help you with it. So the user must learn to adapt to the system and study the system. Finally, the real-time system requires dedicated processing capacity. So it is usually you said the real-time system is well-suited system that process like a lower transaction volumes and those that do not share common records. So usually, it, since it's updated real time, so it, you sh it should not have other records that is affected or it should not share common records. So these systems make extensive use of a local area network and wide area network technology. The terminals that distinguish uh, the terminals at distributed size throughout the organizations are used for what? Um, like receiving, processing, and sending information about only the current transactions. This must be linked in a network arrangement so the user can communicate. So now you might you may see the some similarities and distinguishing characteristic of batch and real time. What are those? Information time frame, so there is a lag existing in the batch and then from the time it is occurred and then the time it is recorded. So the um, the processing in real time, processing takes place the moment the transaction happens or the event occurs. So the resources generally in batch processing system have needs few like hardware programming training is much less required. While on real time, you need to have more resources required than for batch processing. As I mentioned, self-help, um, it should be user interface is good. The user will easily understand the system. The training should be done because the one will help them at that moment. Excuse me. Operational efficiency. So real-time processing system it handles uh, in systems that handles large volumes of transactions each day can create what operational inefficiencies kaya that's why it's it's good for just small transaction volume so a single transaction may affect um, several different accounts some of these accounts however may not need to be updated real time in fact the task of doing so take time that when multiplied by hundreds or thousands of transaction, it can cause significant processing delay. So imagine if you are, um, I was here, uh, in this famous uh, restaurant, the Caramel, I think. 
so it sells peely nuts and other local goods so we just went for a stopover and bought some goodies but the line is so long because the issuing of receipt and then the sales clerk is record, recording it manually so taking um doing the input manually on their books so the line and at that moment so imagine so the batch if you do it by batch uh, batch processing of the non-critical accounts have ever improves the operational efficiencies by eliminating unnecessary activities at the critical points in the process so certain records are processed after the event to avoid operational delays you can do it like you send in um um what do you call this like a sales order or acknowledgement receipts first and then you do all the batch on entering into your ledgers or books or journal so the efficiencies versus um effectiveness you should consider that so you should consider uh, it when selecting a data processing model so if you are the designer you must consider the trade-off between efficiencies and effectiveness for example if in our example the airline reservation system it cannot wait until the 100 passengers or more uh, in an efficient batch size assemble in the travel agent's office before their transactions is are processed. So when the immediate access to the current information is very critical, remember, the user needs real-time processing is the logical choice so when the time lags in the information have no detrimental effects on the user's performance and operational efficiencies can be achieved by processing the data in what batch processing which is really a good choice so why um why do so many accounting information system use batch processing ais is characterized by high volume independent transactions such as recording cash receipts checks received in mail so the processing of such high volume checks can be done during off-peak computer time besides if you are the one who made the checks you rather wait um, the, the longer they, the store or the company and cash the checks, the better for you because you can use your cash and other purposes. So this is one reason why batch processing may be done using real-time data collection. So it can be a combination of both, like um, each customer's sale affects the following accounting records a customer accounts re a uh, receivable so the subsidiary journal or ledger is affected the inventory item is affected inventory control for the general journal a uh, general ledger and then the what else if you if there's a customer sale what what records you need to update the accounts receivable control the sales in the general ledger and then the and then the cost of goods sold so the end of the day after all the sales lady or the sales clerk will process all the sales you will gather it and do the recording of the cash receipts payment and then the updating of the of all the accounting records i mentioned a while ago the con 
inventory, accounts receivable, sales, cost, all the general ledgers and subsidiary ledger books is updated by batch. It can do it daily, weekly, depends upon the transactions or the cost um, company process policy. And that's it. The end of our discussion and lecture. We will now be going on to coding in um, AIS and um, chart of accounts practice exercises. Thank you for joining me. See you again next time. God bless.